An important part of a country's culture are the days people choose to celebrate. They're holidays. They tell you about what people value, what their history has been, what their traditions are, and how people like to have fun. So I'm going to try with this video to give you guys a basic overview of the holidays we have here in Taiwan. After almost seven years of living here, I feel like I have a decent understanding of them. Now look, little thing to make clear before we get underway, because of all the different religions and such that we have on this island, the list could get really long, so I'm going to skip quite a few lesser known and less mainstream holidays. So look, before you start an essay in the comments section about this and that and this and that, I know, I already know, I left out whatever it is and you wish I would have included it. This is what I have to do though to keep things moving, to keep this video manageable. So just understand that, okay? So let's get underway. And we are going in chronological order, so what I mean is we're going to start in January and we're going to end in December, okay? So first one, of course, is New Year's, January 1st. Everybody already knows all about this, so I won't dwell on it too long other than to say that here in Taiwan, specifically in Taipei City, we have in front of our most well-known building, that's Taipei 101, they have a big public party on New Year's Eve, and at midnight, fireworks are shot off from the skyscraper, and it looks pretty damn cool. Okay, second holiday is Lunar New Year, the big Mac Daddy of holidays in Taiwan. This falls depending on the lunar calendar in either January or February. Now, imagine if you will, Christmas, Thanksgiving, and New Year's Eve all rolled into one holiday. That's what you have here. You have fireworks, you have big family meals that drag on forever, and the giving of hongbao, or red envelopes, which are stuffed with money and given out as gifts. That's mostly two children from the adults. And this is also the longest and most extended holiday of the year for Taiwanese people. You usually end up getting about a work week's worth of time off which is really nice, but since all other 23 million people are on break as well at the same time, forget about going to any tourist spot and forget about going to most restaurants and other places of business because chances are they are closed for the holiday. So this holiday can be a double-edged sword. I've kind of discussed that in one of my other videos about Chinese New Year. Moving on, we have the third holiday, which is Lantern Festival. Now, this always happens right after Lunar New Year wraps up. It also falls on different days every year because of the lunar calendar. And while it is a holiday, it is not a day you will have off of work. The cool thing about this holiday, at least for the people here in Taipei and in other big cities, I'm sure, is that we have a big parade in the city with singers, dancers, marching bands, and other kind of cultural groups. And of course there are big lantern floats. And every year will look a little bit different since the lanterns are based on which zodiac animal's year it is. And uh, yeah, in case you were wondering, this year is the year of the pig. So no need to ask me in the comments, it's the year of the pig. After that, we have the fourth holiday of the year. That's February 28th. 228, otherwise known as Peace Memorial Day. So the history behind this one is complex, but just to keep things moving, I will summarize it like this. In 1945, after Japan lost World War II, Taiwan was handed over to the Chinese KMT, and they mismanaged the country and abused the people to the point where they started protesting and rioting. And in response to that protesting and rioting, the Chinese KMT went around massacring everyone in sight and committing all kinds of terrible atrocities. The 228 massacre marks the beginning of the period in Taiwanese history known as the White Terror. And the holiday is to remember all the people who were killed in the massacre and who were persecuted afterwards. 
It's important to note that even though this happened way back in 1947, it wasn't officially acknowledged and it didn't become a holiday until much, much later in the 1990s. All right, moving on and lightening things up a bit. The next holiday, number five, is Children's Day, a day to celebrate kids. This holiday falls on April 4th. Now, look, at first I thought this was a stupid holiday because kids don't have to work and they don't have to pay bills. So, you know, in my mind, every day is Children's Day. But look, really, truth is growing up in Taiwan can be pretty intense with the amount of schooling and extracurricular activities kids are forced to participate in. So yeah, you know what? Here in Taiwan, they deserve a day off. Okay, next, we have holiday number six, which is Tomb Sweeping Day, which occurs on different days according to the lunar calendar again. But this year, it was on April 5th. And basically, what you are supposed to do is travel to your family's gravesite, clean up the tomb and the area around that, pray, burn some incense, burn some ghost money, and honor your ancestors. So, a little note, air pollution can be quite bad at this time of year due to all the burning of incense and stuff. So, maybe, depending on where you are, depending on the conditions, you might want to wear a face mask. A little tip there. Next up, we have holiday number seven. That's May Day or Labor Day, May 1st. A day to honor the workers. Now, there's not much to say here except that most of the time, sadly, you won't have this day off of work. I only remember having that day off once a few years ago. So, day for workers, but uh, get to work. And number eight, holiday number eight, Mother's Day, which falls on the second Sunday in May. Not much to say here other than that you should be nice to your moms. Most of them are pretty amazing and they deserve their day of honor. Thank you to all the moms. Okay, holiday number nine, which is Dragon Boat Festival. This summertime holiday is based again on the lunar calendar, so the exact day it occurs varies, but this year it will be June 7th. A long story here, but just quickly, look, uh, there was this dude, and his name was Chu Yuan, and he lived back in ancient China. And he was a good guy and a patriotic guy who was banished by a king, by a bad king. And later his country was conquered by an outside force that he had tried to warn the king about. And because of this, he committed suicide by throwing himself into a river where he drowned. And the legends say that local people who admired him raced out in their boats to save him, or at least try to retrieve his body. This is why dragon boat races are held during this holiday. Seriously, you should try to watch them at least once if you can, because it's pretty cool to see. Also during this holiday, you will have people eating a special dish called sticky rice dumplings. And uh, in Chinese, that would be zongzi. Reason being that when Chu Yuan's body couldn't be found, people dropped balls of sticky rice into the river so that fish would eat them instead of Chu Yuan's body. Try the zongzi. They're pretty good and there are different flavors you can choose from. So yeah, give it a go. Next up, holiday number 10, we have Father's Day, which falls on August 8th. But why August 8th? Well, because in Mandarin Chinese, August 8th sounds an awful lot like Baba, which is the Mandarin word for father. And as a dad myself, I just want to say that uh, we are pretty important and we deserve our day of honor. And a cold beer, and or multiple cold beers. So keep that in mind. Honor your dads. Holiday number 11, that's the Moon Festival. Again, lunar calendar at work here, so days vary, but this year it will be on September 13th. And again, another long story to tell, so basically there was this beautiful mythical maiden named Chang'e and a dude named Ho Yi, and he was very powerful and heroic. And because of this, he was given a magic potion, and later a thief came around to jack the potion, but Chang'e wasn't having that, so to protect the potion, she drank it, 
and she flew away to the moon and became an immortal goddess. And Hoi, you know, he was obviously bummed out, so he did what one would do in that situation, and he laid out a bunch of cakes and whatnot to sacrifice to his wife, because she was a goddess. And for no other reason, there's also this white rabbit that hangs out with Chang'e on the moon, probably wondering how the hell did I end up on the moon. So popular things to do for this holiday are to have a barbecue with family and eat pomelo fruits and mooncakes, which are really dense and not my favorite thing to eat, but they're also not totally horrible, so you can give those a try. And that brings us finally to holiday number 12, that's Double Ten Day, which is the last holiday of the year in Taiwan. And as the name suggests, Double Ten Day occurs on October 10th. And basically this holiday is a celebration of the ROC, the Republic of China, and it commemorates the Uchang Uprising of 1911, which began the Xinhai Revolution that led to the end of the Qing Dynasty, and the establishment of a republican form of government in China. And now if you're wondering what the hell any of this has to do with Taiwan, then you might want to check out my History of Taiwan video for a bit of context. I'm not a big fan of this holiday, meaning-wise, but look, a day off is a day off, and I'll take it. So, there you have it, people. The 12 big holidays we celebrate here in Taiwan. I hope you liked this video. I hope you found it informative and somewhat entertaining. And if you have any further questions for me or comments to make, go ahead and leave those in the comments section. Thanks very much for watching, and please remember to rate, share, and subscribe. And until the next time, bye-bye!